Now we're looking at the topic, charting the course for the new year. Listen, friends, God has brought us into a good year. Say with me, it's a good year. That's what it is. You know why? Because the one who brought us into it is inherently good. Psalm 119, we are told in verse 68 that you are good and you do good. You are good and the only thing God does is good. Psalm 73 and verse 1, truly God is good to Israel and to all those who have a pure, a clean heart. So everything about our God is good. So the year he has brought us into also has to reflect the nature of the one who brought us into it. It's got to be a good year. Who says amen to that? Amen. Listen, friends, the Bible tells us that his mercies are new every morning. So that suggests to me that this year is not a replica of previous ones. Not a replica of previous years. Thank God for previous years. But this year is not a duplicate of them. If these masses are new every morning, it means there must be something different about this year that is worth looking forward to. Something different about the year that is worth being anticipatory about. What eyes haven't seen, what ears haven't heard, what hasn't entered into the heart of any man. Remember he said in Ezekiel 36 and verse 11, he said he would do better for you than at the beginning. There's something called a divine trajectory. This is a part of the pattern of God in dealing with men. A divine trajectory that is very predictable, very constant, very consistent. We are told in Psalm 115, for example, and verse 14. He said in the New King James Version, May the Lord give you increase more and more. In the King James Version, it says the Lord increase you more and more. So the trajectory of, that is, that is like a consistent divine trajectory is that things keep getting better in God. There is no better yesterday in God. The path of the righteous is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. And Isaac mirrors that. Genesis 26 verse 12 and verse 13. The Bible said that he sowed in that land. And in the same year he received a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. Meaning that his investments did not go bad. He had a maximum return on his investments. Whatever your investments are this year, on those investments, you will have a maximum return. Yeah. Your investments will not go bad. Yeah. Who says amen to that? Yeah. Now, the next verse, verse 13, if you will give it to me in the King James Version, the Bible says that the man walks great and went forward. That's the divine trajectory. Remember, it's our year of noticeable progress. He went forward, not backward. Listen, in God, God does not take you from, you see, God does not take a man from up to down. God takes people from down to up and from up to higher. That's how God deals with men. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why he will say in Psalm 71, and verse 21, thou will increase my greatness. That is going from high to higher, great to greater. Glory to God. That will increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. First Chronicles chapter 11 and verse 9. If you can give it to me in the King James Version. First Chronicles 11 and verse 9. King James. Everybody read it. So David works how? 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 How will you wax this year? Somebody shout it one more time. So you're going to go from glory to glory. From strength to strength. In the name of Jesus. From increase to greater increase. Your beginning may be small. Listen to me. When God says it is small, it's not because it's small. But in comparison to what is coming, it is small. Your beginning may be small. But your latter end will greatly increase. This year you're going to be richer. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That's the plan of God for us, friends. 
and we need to know it and lock our minds on this truth. This is the agenda of God. We need to be like Mary in Luke chapter 1 and verse 38 and say, I agree with your plan. Be it unto me according to your word. I just choose to believe that you cannot be wrong because you can't be wrong. Inherently, God cannot be wrong. The Bible says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. As he said it, will he not do it? As he spoken it, will he not make it good? In Jeremiah 29 and verse 11, he said, For I know the plans that I have for you. They are plans to prosper you. Glory to God. That's in the New International Version. Plans to prosper you. Glory to God. Not to harm you. Hallelujah. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. That tells me that number one, God has a plan. Number two, it's a good plan. Number three, anything that is happening or that may want to happen that is contrary to good cannot be from God. Amen. Amen. It cannot be from where? From God. In Matthew chapter 13, when they slept and woke up in the morning and saw tears planted among wheat, what did they say? The enemy has done this. Verse 28. The enemy. Matthew 13, 28. It's the enemy. This can be from God. This can be from God. You need to be able to design the enemy to defeat him. This can stop putting everything at God. Oh, God. No, God doesn't do bad. He went about doing good. The only thing God does is good, friends. So when something is going wrong, it can be corrected. Is anybody hearing me this morning? So if it is not good, it's not from God. And that the good thing also is that if it's not good, it cannot stop God's plan. If it's not from God, it cannot stop God. Isaiah 14 and verse 24, he said, he said, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. As I have proposed, so shall it stand. As I have thought, so shall it come to pass. As I have proposed, so shall it stand. The Bible says that Amos 3 verse 8, give it to me. It said, it said, it said the Lord God has spoken. Who can but prophesy? When the, look at it. It said, the lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken. Meaning, after God has spoken, any other speaker is a late comer. Who is it that will say a thing and it will come to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? So if anybody comes to you and says, this year is going to be bad, it's true, but not for you. For where there is a casting down, for you there is a lifting up. Job 22, the Bible tells us that in verse 28, you would decree a thing. It will be established to you, the light will shine on your path. He says that when there is a casting down, when men say there is a casting down, you will say. So it doesn't matter what they say, it matters what you say. It matters what you say. So don't say a confederacy to what they say, a confederacy to. Don't fear their fear, don't dread their dread. The world ain't going to get better. In the days of Isaac, there was farming. Genesis 26, there was farming, economic recession. But in the midst of recession, Isaac was experiencing a progression. In the midst of lack, he was swimming in plenty because your case can be different. As a child of God. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying this morning? So friends, this is the plan of God. This is the arrangement of heaven. How is this going to become our reality on earth? In Genesis 13 and verse 14, God came to Abraham. The Bible said the Lord spoke to Abraham after Lot had been separated from him. After Lot had been separated from him. This is an instructive verse of the Bible. As you prepare to navigate your way through the year 2024. The Lord said to Abraham, after Lot had separated from him. Listen, stop. You see, you must start seeing your life beyond the people who are no longer a part of it. Start seeing your life beyond. Lot separated. Lot left him. So God came. Even though Lot has gone, I'm still here. Lot can be replaced. It's me you cannot do without. You can do with that lot. 
For every human relationship, God can give you a self, a replacement. But for God, there's no replacement. Are you hearing what I'm saying? After the Lord had left him, God came. And you need to realize that life didn't start with those who left. Life, life must not end after they leave. First John chapter 2 and verse 19. If you can give it to me in the message version. First John 2 and verse 19. Everybody go. Some people will show you the true colors this year. And it's okay. Listen, stop missing what you no longer need. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Stop medicating on people who belong to your history. Who belong to your past. Learn to move on. That's so important. The Lord came to Abraham after the Lord had separated from him. Genesis 13 and verse 14. Go, let's go back there. And God said, look from... Don't look at, look from. So number one, the first thing you need to do is to start seeing life beyond those who are no longer a part of it. Number two, begin to look beyond your current realities. Don't just look at where you are. Look from where you are. Second Corinthians 4 and verse 18. While we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things that are not seen, for the things that are seen are temporary, subject to change, transient, on their way out. But the unseen things are more permanent, more lasting, more eternal. So I don't know what is in your bank account and look beyond it. I don't know what verdicts you got from the hospital. Look beyond it. You ain't going nowhere. You are going to live and not die. A man was in my house yesterday with his wife. Two years ago, his wife just called me out of the blues and said, my husband is in Lagos. He is in Evercare. I need you to please find a way to reach him. I said, I'm on my way. I got to the place. I met the man dealing with cancer all over his body. Cancer reaching all over his body. They said the normal prostrate count should be between, for a normal person should be between, uh, um, I think maybe one and four, something like that, one and four, zero and four. East was 70. 70. And we prayed right there, inside ever care, and asked God to do what only he could do. And in two weeks, the man called me back that he went to go and review the result. And the prostate cancer, when they check his prostate, the thing had gone from 70 to less than one. Less than one. Two years after, he was in my house yesterday, bouncing strong. Drove his family down, drove them out again, bouncing strong. Who is he that says a thing and it comes to pass when the Lord hasn't commanded it? Anything written against you that is contrary to you on this holy mountain will tear it. In your life, only God's word will stand. Who says amen one more time to that? Glory to God. So start looking beyond where you are right now. James chapter 1 and verse 9 in the King James Version. Let the brother of low estate rejoice in that he is exalted. Maybe right now you are in a low estate. You even borrowed your way to church this morning. That is now, not later. That's subject to change. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why we never look down on anybody. Because you don't know what is in their future. You may know their past and their present, but you are totally oblivious as to what is in the plan of God for their lives. Paul says, we henceforth know we no man after the flesh. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 16. So you must learn to look not at current but beyond your qualities. The number three, very important, you need to divorce your mind from the past. Number one, begin to see life beyond those who are no longer a part of it. Those who are no longer a part of it. They used to be a part of it. 
but they are no longer a part of it close that chapter of your life it's not the last chapter number two start seeing beyond your current realities number three you must divorce your mind from the past nobody goes forward looking backward exodus chapter 32 they had left egypt but egypt had not left them how did i know because in exodus 32 they were trying to make an image and in verse 4 the only image they could come up with was the image of a golden calf where did that come from that was the image of the gods that they served in egypt are you hearing what i'm saying so the man was tied to the apron apron strings of their past let, 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 let me tell you this be, be careful about events and people and things from your past that you have refused to let go of be careful about the people the events and the people from your past that you have refused to let go of unforgiveness is a sign that there is something that happened that you have refused to let go of that's unforgiveness something that happened that you've not been able to go beyond you are you are you are you are hurt over an event that has happened that's already in the past are you hearing what i'm saying so if you're holding on it's because you refuse to let go of that event regret is about something that you have refused to move beyond move beyond it life is beyond that moment glory to god don't allow a clean year be stained by events from your past it's a clean year don't stain this year we think you should have left behind in 2020 is anybody hearing what i'm saying it's a clean year and then number four begin to see the big picture begin to see the what, what does that mean begin to see the year the way god sees it psalm 36 and verse 9 he said with you is the fountain of life and in your light we see life what does that mean i'm seeing it the way you see it how does god see 2024 for us graceful advancement how does he see it noticeable progress if at the end of this year there is no noticeable progress we didn't leave out god's 2024 matthew 6 tells us what to do in prayer they will be done on earth as it is in heaven how god sees the year must become oh, i'm seeing the year graceful advancement noticeable progress all the way